go to a little church that can stop and pivot. If there's something like that that comes up, I want you to know, if there's somebody that needs to be prayed for, and it's a mer let's stop right then and pray. We'll pick on somebody, or y'all pick on You understand what I'm saying? Be instant in season and out of season. All right. Now, what are we seeing? 435. 435. What a friend. Yeah. My cousin Laura is sick on the couch at our house. And I asked her what to sing. This is one she proposed.
Sally and I have got a 14 year anniversary coming up on November the 8th. So, about a 10 days away. And I, I have forgot, I, I kept those quotes. But our 10th and 11th, I for, forgot. Not good! <laughs> Not good. Uh, but when we were on our honeymoon, we heard that Pat, and, uh, Darty and his wife Leanne, had had a son. And so we were coming back from Lake Potoka down through Louisville. We had to change some clothes at our apartment and come on down. And we stopped by the hospital and we visited with Pat. And that little boy is a special needs boy. Last week he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior and he was baptized. Praise be to God. Sally, you want to how, how, you want to, I've left some stuff out. You want to fill in the cracks for me? They've just done a fabulous job with him and trying to mainstream him and not coddle him and have continued to keep him. They have done just a wonderful job. And but the preacher asked him about it. He said, what was it he said to the preacher? What? When they were, when they, he had helped build a baptismal. Oh, he, he had filled a baptismal pool for a baptism in the church. And he said, on the way to the baptism, he said, I think I'd like to be baptized. And his mom says, do you know what this means? And he said that Jesus died for me and, and he loves me. And they had the preacher speak with him. And when the preacher spoke with him, he came out and he said, he knows exactly what he's talking about. There's no question there. Praises to God. Praises to God. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we come before you as sinners. We come before you as a people needing a God. We come before you as hearers. Hearing you call us to assemble. And we're here. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bind our hearts and our minds and our souls together with you in the moments ahead. We ask, O oh Lord, that you <coughs> speak to our needs, speak to the guidance of our hearts and our soul. Lord, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the blessings of life and the, and the good harvest that the crops have yielded around here. And we just pray, oh God, that you would watch over us and help us. Lord, forgive me of my sins, for they are many. And I ask that you forgive Sally and Lincoln of their sins. And then I ask, Lord, that you forgive all of my family. And Father, I, I ask that you forgive my family that's here, this church family, of their sins. I ask that, Lord, for forgiveness of the people of Morgantown, Kentucky, and Butler County, yea, even Kentucky, Father, the United States, and the whole world. Oh, Father, how precious and wonderful is your name. Your Love and compassion cannot be hemmed in and, and can't, Lord, be measured. Thank you for your love for us. It's in Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Amen. If I took you back to that moment uh, and you were posed the question, would you like to be saved or whatever? If you wanted God to let you into heaven, what would be the reason that you would give that he should give you into heaven? And <clears throat> you would answer that. Do you remember that moment? Yeah. You, you can all, listen, 
the memories of it is so good and so fresh, you can almost taste it, can't you? I never will forget where I was. I was in the First Baptist Church, just about where Brenda is sitting, but closer to the edge. And I had been there that morning, and I had come in to wash some clothes, and, and, and I was going to go back. But I had wanted to get it right. God had let me know that week that I needed to get right with Him. That if I died, I was going to hell. And I didn't want to do that. And so, I stayed that afternoon at my mom and dad's house, and it concerned them. Because most of the time, I got my belly full, I got my clothes clean, I headed out. But that day I didn't. And so I stayed that night and finally I uh, turned loose of the pew and I ran down the aisle and I got down on my knees with the pastor and I gave my heart to Jesus. I said, take all of me. And I have not always lived a pure life. I've not always been a perfect servant. But God has forgiven me, not because of me, but because of the price his son paid for me. See, that's what makes me worthy, is not what, uh, what I've done. Because my righteousness, like it says in the Bible, is this filthy rags. But Jesus' righteousness was enough. This story of Zacchaeus, I, I want to give you some facts. It says he was wealthy. Well, how did he become wealthy? Well, the uh, Jews had aligned with Alexander the Great. They, he had come there and the high priest went out to meet him and he said, you're prophesied of coming. He said, well, Alexander said, well, not only that, said, I'm going to take care of you till I die. And then he turned around and headed home and proceeded to die. And there was a civil war. And the Jews decided that they wanted to align with the Romans. They thought they could trust them. Now the Romans, when they conquered the world, they didn't want things from people uh, as far as fighting. They didn't want the fighting. They wanted it to be over. They wanted them to surrender quick. They wanted them to pay their taxes, go about their business, buy stuff from Rome, Support the government. Same thing that's going on in America and all over the world. Every government, that's what's going on. But the Jews said, uh, we're going to collect the taxes for you. And the Romans said, well, that's not a problem. We'll appoint chief tax collectors. And we'll give them districts. And we'll tell them how much taxes have to come out of that district. And they're going to get a certain portion of what they collect. Well, the bad thing was, is if they collected more than what people owed, or if people had moved in that, that hadn't had tax collected on them from that region, they'd get it from them, and they would hire under tax collectors. The way I read my Bible, Matthew, the disciple, was probably an under tax collector under Zacchaeus. Now, I don't know when the relationship happened, whatever, but, but there are things that give you hints that he might be. But Jesus came and saw him as a man, and what did he say? Come on, y'all respond to me. Zacchaeus, what? Come down, for I must go to your house today. I need to prepare my worship service more in advance. 
because wouldn't it have been good if I'd had the lyrics given like all of that and had the actions on there and all of us could have done that song. So I, I, I'm working on that next time I preach on Zacchaeus or something about that, we'll do that. I must go to your house today. Now, one time I was short. One time I was tall. I'm going back towards the short. I'm shrinking. But <clears throat> short people get picked on. Go to mine. I sure did. Poor Roger Tanner, man, he, he got picked on all the time. And I could go down the list of people. And the ones that got picked on a lot, generally, uh, they were short. I was dumb, too, and, and, and that got me picked on. But, folks, how wonderful Zacchaeus felt. You know, uh, this was like 50 years ago, having an opportunity to go home with Elvis for a jam session. Or 40 years, 40 or 35 years ago, to go be with Michael Jackson. It's a big name. I'm talking about all-star pop. Get to go and sit down and eat at their house. Fabulous. There's something special about breaking bread with folks. Sit down in their house and it may just be a bologna sandwich, but that's good enough. But there's something that brings that closeness. God wants that closeness with us. Look at the story of Zacchaeus. And it should be the story all over the world. Our God spoke to one person and said, I'm going to your house and I'm giving you an opportunity to be saved. For each one of us, God has come to us at a certain point and said, I want to be your Savior. I want to protect you from the damnation of hell, but I want that. I want to give you abundant life. Not just enough to get by, but life abundant. We are in the Thanksgiving season. Praise be to God for His goodness and his glory. One of the things that my wife posted on YouTube, uh, FaceTime, what is it? Facebook. Facebook this week, okay? And it teaches persistence in faith. It said, I have survived 100% of the hard days I've ever had. We need to recall that. Like the three men in the fire. God didn't take them out of the fire. The king did later, but not God. But God was with them through the fire, and he's with us. Let us live victoriously today because we've got Jesus in our heart. May God's name be praised. <coughs>